So we've discussed on this program before how Josh Heupel is very against fighting in practice. Tennessee does not have physical practices because they want to keep people healthy. This all started probably around 2000 when Philip Fulmer started utilizing thud practices in which you hit people, but you don't take them to the ground. So football has continually got gotten either softer or more PC, depending on what you think. I want to share this, if I may. Should I pull it up, Caleb? Because this is I got from, it with me. You want me to pull it up? Yeah, pull it up. This is from Hoover High School. And I want you to tell me if this is a bad thing. So let me set it up first. What you want to watch is uh, the 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 coach, the guy in the white shirt on your left. He's going to run through the offensive line. And watch how this ends. All right, hit play. All right. Okay, so he's the tailback. He's running through the offensive line, and boom, there's a guy just standing there. It's a little comedic. There's a guy just standing there in a group of players, and he knocks him over. Now, the coach My favorite Twitter troll, three-year letterman, would be proud. Yes, the coaches at Hoover High School are under investigation for this. Guys. He ran into a player and knocked a player down during a drill. Has football just gotten too soft? Should this be a thing? No, it's not. It's a high school. You don't put your hands on students. That is this the rule of the day. You don't do it. I'm sorry. And guys, this is very relevant for another reason. And I'm going to bring this up. Uh, who The guy Dave calls Bullethead. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt was an assistant coach in Hoover, Alabama before he made it to the college ranks. He has experience coaching there. Jeremy Pruitt in 2019. Who remembers when Jared Garantano went rogue against Alabama? Jeremy Pruitt had a perfect call on for a handoff to Quiveras Crouch for a touchdown that would have made it a one-score game. Garantano decided to go rogue and try to sneak it into the end zone. He fumbles. Alabama returns it for a touchdown. Game's over. Jeremy Pruitt yells at Garantano, benches him. I was good with all that. But he also grabs Garantano's face mask. And I wrote at the time, I said, that is that shows his lack of maturity as a head coach. Yell at him, bench him. Make say every you can even throw them under the bus a little bit eh, 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 in the press conferences, but you don't get physical with your players, particularly on camera. And Jeremy Pruitt did that. He crossed the line. I didn't call for his firing at that time, but I did say that is a big no, no, you don't do that. Okay. And yeah, Jeremy Pruitt crossed a huge line. This coach crossed a huge line. You don't get physical with your players, you don't. And this goes back to the Bobby Knight days. Everybody was always like, oh, Bobby Knight was just giving tough love. He choked a player. He choked a player. That's not tough love, okay? You don't grab a player's neck and call that tough love. You don't get physical with players. I don't care what you guys want to tell me about. Well, oh, back in my day in the 1970s, we did this. Well, your day sucked, okay? So I'm saying you don't do that nowadays. Let's advance this for a second. What if that very that very practice happened in college because you you've got a right to say what you said about minors high school students okay you don't put your hands on them period i get that but what about if this happened in college Would there be any any hubbub about it no it's still a problem it, no i actually i'm going to say this caveat it's actually not as big of a problem as it was when Jeremy Pruitt was doing it. Because in college, like just five years ago, or when Bobby Knight was doing it, you're a multimillionaire head coach in a position of authority and you're getting physical with players. But now players have leverage because they're getting paid. However, the coach still is the authority figure, even in the NFL. I, I don't even care if it's in the pros. You, you don't get physical. When you are the person in power, you don't get physical with the person who works under you. Okay, that that is rules anywhere. Dave, I work for you. I'll just tell you, I'll say, you're not allowed to physically touch me in, in an angry way. You're not allowed to do that. Okay. I will not like, like, I'm not going to stand for that. If my boss is anywhere, get physical with me when they're angry with me. That's a problem. You don't get to do that. Well, <laughs> Sorry, Caleb, Dave. I hope I didn't hurt you on that. But. No, why is Caleb so upset? I don't know. Because you started the fight with him. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're all over the, the place. Record, Dave has never touched me, guys. But listen, to the, you, you are big time in the minority, by the way. Because I asked the uh, the poll question, it's on our YouTube page. Now, 
I, first, I want to finish up the last poll question. Who is more key to the Vols' success this season? Nico got 55% of the vote. The defensive line got 44% of the vote. That was way closer than I thought. But the new one has football gotten too soft. 73% say yes. 27% say no. I, I've heard how strong you feel about it. Are you surprised by that number? No, because I think there's lines here. When you say that, people could say, Dave, you could say football has gotten too soft and at the same time say coaches should not put their hands on players. There is a line between the two. Philip Fulmer, you tell me you cover practice. Did Philip Fulmer ever assault a player? Ever? Um, No, but I'm sure he put his hands on him like to teach him technique. Well, yes, but teaching technique versus running at somebody from the sideline and trying right. to tackle them and ripping their helmet off is different. If you're putting your hands on somebody because you're trying to teach them technique, or if you bring somebody in, you like forward bring them into a hug and be like, hey, you know, you're okay. You're like that's different. Then, but if you put your hands on somebody out of, a, you know, just out of anger, that is a problem. You can't do that. And I don't think Fulmer ever did that. That doesn't mean Fulmer didn't encourage fighting in practice sometimes among his players to toughen them up. Yes, he did. Uh, let me. Let me that's you. not a problem. But yeah. the, he's okay. The well, let me ask you this: Is it a concern whatsoever that Tennessee doesn't hold the most physical practices in the world, and that uh, there there is no fighting? Fighting in and of itself is not a good thing, but sometimes on the football field, it actually is a great thing. Tennessee doesn't win a national championship in '98 without the offense standing up and having a huge monster brawl and getting their um, respect from the defense. So fighting in a football practice is not always a bad thing. So does it concern you at all the way Josh Heupel approaches his practices and approaches the way he conducts business um, from day to day? No, because of the way the game has changed. And this isn't just football. This is basketball. You know, back in the 80s in sports, you know, you needed like in basketball, you wanted your Dennis Rodman to be your enforcer. You know what I mean? Or you wanted somebody like that. Or in football, you wanted your tough guy that was going to start fights. Even into the 2000s, you wanted your Ron Artest, the guy that made, was just crazy enough to go beat up a fan in the stands. Okay. You wanted that guy on your team. Um, but the games have both changed to a level where physicality, that level of physicality is not allowed. Whether or not you agree with that is one thing. But I think because of that, I don't think it's as necessary anymore to encourage this type of fighting because let's be honest. See, this is, it's funny because we just talked about him last segment. For those who don't know, this is what Peyton Manning got criticized for a lot in the NFL. Remember Peyton Manning was such a technocrat computer guy that he didn't encourage toughness among his teammates in practice. And he openly said like when players would fight on behalf of him, he'd be like, I don't want that. That's a 15 yard penalty. It's going to cost me a drive. And a lot of players were like, I just wish he would show just a little more like, you know, moxie because like whatever that's a that was the difference between peyton and brady whatever you think about brady brady kind of allowed his players to show some moxie on his behalf you know what i mean yeah and, you can you can be both cerebral and tough but in right. your opinion what's more important i still think tough is more important on a general sense but for a quarterback i don't know it's it, it, I'm, I'm debating it for a quarterback i don't think peyton wasn't tough peyton I'm wanted to about, get hit no, i'm talking about a coach Oh, I, want, I want my coach to be cerebral. The toughness should come from the players. The toughest teams in the late 90s, that was because Al Wilson was tough. Well, you have, first of all, I think you have to be cerebral to some extent. I don't think it's a situation where you can just get a coaching job anymore. So I'm, I'm going to say toughness. And I think Josh Heupel is tough, despite the way that he runs his practice. And uh, I think that he is tough on his guys in terms of discipline, the amount of work they have to do, and they build mental toughness through hours of working out. I mean, I've seen the schedules. They are insane in the offseason. So I think that's how he builds his toughness. And I've never seen Tennessee get get out, out physicaled in the past couple of years, maybe the second half against Alabama, possibly. But when have you seen them get out physical? I, yeah, I really haven't. I thought they just got outsmarted in some of their losses last year. But breaking news to everybody on the message board. Dave thinks Ed Orgeron would make a better coach than Mike Elko. Mike Elko is the cerebral Ivy League guy, and Ed Orgeron is the tough guy. No, he said everybody's that, a combination of both. I would I mean, take Elko a hundred times over Orgeron. But but Orgeron, whatever you want to say about him, he wasn't he wasn't cerebral at all. But he was the he instilled the most toughness of any coach ever, right? Yeah, 
I guess. I mean, he but, he, he I mean, told you many, to be tough. Yeah, but the poor kids. I mean, how many IQ points did that cost? They Wait, okay, here we go. Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin is all cerebral. You know Lane Kiffin doesn't push toughness. He's all cerebral. Lane Kiffin or Ed Orsrod. You just said you would take Ed Orsrod over Lane Kiffin, Dave. No, I didn't. Oh, you did. You I did. Was... Dave said he did. Guys, Dave thinks Ed Orsrod makes a better football coach than Lane Kiffin. If you give me the perfect <laughs> assistant coaching staff, maybe. He had the perfect assistant coaching staff at LSU. I mean, that is true. He's okay, how about this? Be honest. And I know how you feel the same way about Ed Orgeron and I do. And that's he got pretty lucky by getting the job at LSU and got lucky winning the national <laughs> championship. But would you take his entire coaching staff? He had two great coordinators in 2019. Or would you take Ole Miss's entire coaching staff? I'd still take Ole Miss's. I think no! Ed had it. Come Hold on. on. Let me finish. Ed Orgeron had a great coaching staff, yes. He also had the most talented team in college football history, the team that would actually beat the 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Okay, he did. He had that team. 2019. Yes, he recruited him, but okay, okay, fair enough. But we're not talking about that aspect of coaching. Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. I think it's more impressive to go 11 and two in two out of three years at Ole Miss than to win one national title at LSU. I do. I think that's more impressive. Okay. All right. But Lane, uh, we, we all know this now. Dave wants the coach that will lift with the players because whatever you want to say about Orgeron, he probably could outlift half the defensive line in his 50s, couldn't he? Oh, <laughs> no. I, I I don't want the guy that's going to lift with the players. I don't think that's very wise. I think you need to draw a line there. But... Or, 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 or another one, does Dave prefer John Chavis to David Cutcliffe? I'm just trolling Dave, guys. But well, I do I do <laughs> want the head coach to know where the weight room is. <laughs> I mean, because right or wrong, perception when you're out there selling yourself and selling your program is a factor. That's why I always I wish say, for the go ahead. Sorry, what I wish for the amount of times he likes to take his shirt off, Bruce Pearl knew where the weight room was, but I look pretty good.